A question I often get is how to tell this, an edible wild plant that was the source of the modern day carrot, from this, a highly toxic look-alike cousin. Of course I'm referring to the wild carrot or Queen Anne's lace, Daucus carata, and the infamous poison hemlock, Cania maculatum. While these two plants are in the same family and look like each other at first glance, there are plenty of differences between them that can be used to tell them apart. Neither species is native to North America, but they have been introduced and have spread across the continent and can be found growing in the same disturbed areas together, so being able to tell them apart can come in handy. First, some generalities about these two plants. Queen Anne's lace is usually smaller than poison hemlock in height and normally blooms a little later than poison hemlock. However, it's the end of May, and here in central Kentucky, I see poison hemlock and Queen Anne's lace both blooming on the sides of the road. If poison hemlock was mowed early, it may be flowering at a smaller size and later in the season too, so overall size and bloom time isn't always a perfect indicator of species. That means we need to look at some more definitive characteristics to tell these two lookalikes apart. Let's start with the flowers, since that is usually what catches people's eye and draws them to these plants for a closer look. Both Queen Anne's Lace and Poison Hemlock have tiny white flowers that form in roundish heads, but there are some distinct differences between them. Queen Anne's Lace has flower heads that are normally flat to slightly dished like a small bird's nest, although this can be variable, while Poison Hemlock has more rounded flower heads. Also, the flower heads of Queen Anne's Lace are more compact, and Poison Hemlock has looser, more open flower heads. If you look closely at a head of Queen Anne's Lace flowers, there will be a spot of purplish red flowers in the center. At least most of the time, it is sometimes absent. Poison Hemlock does not have colored flowers anywhere in its flower heads. And there's one last thing to look for on the flower heads, or on the underside of them to be exact. Below the flower head of Queen Anne's Lace are thin, green, forked bracts. Poison Hemlock has small, scale-shaped bracts, or none at all. If you love content about identifying plants, then please go identify that like button. There are also very noticeable differences in the foliage between the two. Queen Anne's Lace has grayish green foliage that is hairy and reminds me of a skinnier parsley leaf. Poison Hemlock has bright green foliage that is smooth and has a lacy, fern-like appearance. The way most people learn to tell these two apart is by looking at the stem of the flowering stalk. Queen Anne's Lace has a green stem that is hairy. Although this can vary greatly, and some individual plants may be nearly hairless, and others may be quite fuzzy. An easy way to remember this trait of Queen Anne's Lace is the little saying, Queen Anne has hairy legs. Poison Hemlock has a smooth stem that will have purple blotches on it. Again, the number of blotches on an individual plant can vary greatly. Some will have tons of them, and some will have almost none. The ones with fewer usually have them down towards the base of the stalk. I've been getting quite a few questions from people asking how they can help support the channel, so I'm going to quickly run through a few of the options. A couple of simple free and easy ways are to hit the like button when you watch a video and to subscribe to the channel. This lets YouTube know you value the content and that you're engaged with it, and this in turn helps YouTube show it to more people. Beyond that, there's YouTube Super Thanks, which is the heart with the dollar sign in it, right below the video. And also, there are some direct donation options that I'll put a link to in the description. Thank you to all those who have helped support the channel over the years. We truly do appreciate you all. As you may have noticed, there could be some variability in these characteristics. So when in doubt, check out a few different ones to be sure of your ID. Once you get some experience, IDing Queen Anne's Lace and Poison Hemlock becomes much easier and you can even tell the two apart while driving down the road and looking at plants along the edge. Also, be aware there are many species of the carrot family found in North America. Some of them native, some of them introduced, and many of them are quite toxic. So just be careful when handling any plant that resembles Queen Anne's Lace. If you'd like to see a video going into more detail on the common carrot family species found in North America, let me know in the comments. Queen Anne's Lace and Poison Hemlock are both considered invasive in North America. Although Poison Hemlock is a much bigger problem as it can spread extremely quickly and form dense monocultures that choke out native plants and offer nothing for our native wildlife. Since Poison Hemlock is much easier to spot when flowering, this is usually when people realize they have an infestation of Poison Hemlock. The good news is you can still stop flowering hemlock from setting seed and lessen its spread. And you can learn how to do that in this video and be sure to take some time and enjoy the nature in your backyard.